Hello, hello, hello to all my uniques out there. This is your girl, Akudo. Welcome to your unique wisdom. I am so sorry I didn't bring this to you guys last week. I had a marriage enrichment program in my church where I dealt with this topic, communication, and I was going to video it and bring it to you guys for unique wisdom. But unfortunately, something went wrong and I couldn't give it to you guys. So we're going to do it today. Communication, based on my personal definition, is the give and take of information between two people. You give information by speaking and you receive information by listening between two people, between two lovers, between two partners, between a husband and a wife. Dr. Amy Bellows defines communication as the mother that holds a relationship together. And she said that when there is no communication, there is no marriage. Nobody is being nurtured in a marriage where there is no communication. But before we go down to what communication is and how it is important in our relationship, I'm going to give you some of the criteria that I think should be present before communication can really take place. The first thing is there must be listening. You have to be a good listener to be a good communicator. Husband and wife, lovers and partners, we have to listen to each other. You can't talk all the time. You talk and then you listen and hear what your partner has to say. The second one, it must be clear. Clarity and concession. Say what you need to say and mean what you are saying. It has to be clear. There will be no confusion. Nobody is a psychic. Nobody is going to read or assume what you think or try to figure out what you're saying. You must be as clear as possible. It must be friendly. Make sure that it is friendly. Just like you talk to your friends and you mind what you say. You walk around them. You tiptoe around them so that you don't hurt their feelings. Is the same thing in a marriage. Is the same thing in a relationship. Make sure that it is friendly. It must have empathy. It must show empathy when you are communicating with your partner. Put yourself in their position. What you're about to tell them, would you want somebody to say that to you? If you think it's okay for somebody to say that to you, then my sister is okay to say it. Then my brother is okay to say it. But if you know that if somebody says the same things to you and is going to hurt your feelings, then please don't say it to each other. So there must be empathy. You must listen. There must be clarity. It must be concise. There must be friendliness, open-mindedness. That's number six. You must be open-minded. You can't have a closed mind. It's not going to be all about me, myself, and I. When you're talking, you have to op be open to other people's ideas, other people's suggestions. You do not know it all. So have an open mind. Receive information from your partner. Receive information from your lover. Receive information from your wife, from your husband. It's not your way or the highway. And finally, number seven, they must be respectful. You must respect each other in that communication. So for communication to really take place, for you to say, oh Lord, in my marriage we had very good communication, you must have these seven things. You must listen, it must be clear, it must be concise, you must show empathy, there must be friendliness, open-mindedness, and finally, there must be respect. Now, let us move on to the two kinds of com communication. We have the non-verbal communication and we have the verbal communication. I'm going to read what the verbal says. The verbal communication is that type of communication that deals with spoken words. It is the sharing of information between individuals by using speech. Verbal information is the one you say between you and your wife and it can be formal or it can be informal. Formal are the, you know, the serious things in the family, family values, family dreams, family goals, family objectives. When you sit down with your wife or your partner and you guys talk about serious things concerning the family. While the informal communication is the little how was work, what are you doing, 
Did you hear, hear what they said in the news? Did you do this? Did, just the little things that bring the family together. So that is verbal communication. Spoken words, it has to do with speech. While the non-verbal communication, which is the second type of communication, I will read. This is the communication that requires no words, but has everything to do with your facial expression, your body language, your hand gestures, and the tone of your voice. Non-verbal is very, very risky and very, very important because it's not what you're saying, it's what your face is saying, is what your body language is saying, is what your hands are saying, and is what the tone of your voice is saying. Some of us, we don't say anything, but you look down on your wife or you look down on your husband and you size them up like this. Some of us, when the man is talking or the woman is talking, you do your face like this. Or some of us will say anything and we just do this, which means talk to the hands. Some of us we will sigh, some of us will start humming, some of us will walk away, some of us will ignore you. So there are so many things we do. And then the tone of your voice, there is nothing you cannot say, but it depends on the tone with which you are saying it. You can say something, can you please come and sit down here? Or you can say, come over here and sit down here. And you see, it's the same thing, but it's said in different tones. So we have to be very, very cautious of those two. The verbal communication and the non-verbal communication. Verbal has to do with what? And non-verbal has to do with your facial expression, your body language, your hand gestures, and the tone of your voice. So when we are in a relationship, in our marriages, we are trying to build this marriage, we are trying to build this partnership for us to be together and everything. Let us remember to be cautious of this. Let us remember how we communicate to each other and know that the way you communicate to your lover determines how they respond back to you. Because when you give them negativity, they're going to give you back negativity. And trust me, sometimes they'll give it to you and then they will tell you, you are yelling at me, so I'm going to yell at you. You're screaming at me, I'm going to scream at you. So let us be careful how we come and speak to each other, whether verbal or non-verbal, so that we can be careful of what we're saying. Now, I'm going to talk about the five kinds of communicators we have, so that you will know which kind you are. Some people communicate differently, and when you know how your wife communicates or how your husband communicates, then you will be able to know, okay, this is how I communicate, and let me find a way to walk around this so it can be comfortable for my partner. The first kind of communicator is the one we call the assertive communicator. Let me read the assertive communicator. The assertive communicator, they are the ones that respect themselves and others. Okay? And they communicate through open, honest, and direct communication. They are open, they are respectful, when they say their own, they give you an opportunity to say yours. But most of the time, you have to be very careful with assertive communicators. Sometimes they tend, when they do too much, they tend to be authoritative or they tend to be controlling. So you have to watch it if you are an assertive communicator. But assertive communicators are one of the, they are the best. Because they know what they are saying, they know how to say it, they are confident in what they are saying, they are confident in what they believe and they know how to communicate it to you and they are respectful of you, they are respectful of your opinions and they are respectful of your questions. And then the second kind is the one we call the aggressive communicators. These ones are very aggressive. For them, it's a win or lose situation. There is always a competition going on. When they come to you, they are very aggressive. They want to get it their way. Me, myself, and I, it must be their way or no way. And most partners and marriages, in marriages, communicate like this. They are very aggressive about it. And then we have the third, which is the passive aggressive. The passive aggressive are the ones that everything you say is okay. They are very passive on the surface but they are very aggressive underneath. They will do stuff here and come out and be asking who did it. When you see them, you're like, oh, they can't really do much. But at the end of the day, they are the ones doing everything underneath 
but you will never know. So those ones, we call them the passive aggressive, and I'm going to read their definition. For the passive aggressive, this is where people appear passive on the surface, but are actually acting out their anger in directly or behind the scene. They are actively acting out their anger indirectly or behind the scene. But on the surface, they are very passive. The fourth kind of communicator we're going to talk about is the submissive communicator. The submissive communicator, we call them people-pleasing communicators. They please anybody. If they come to you and they know what you like, that's all they talk about so you, they can please you. When they go to the next person, they be, you can say they are really like they are chameleons. They change with wherever will come here, they'll change to that environment. They come here, they change to that environment. They are submissive. They do not like conflict. They keep bottling everything in. They keep bottling everything. Whatever you say is good with them. Whatever you do is okay with them. Because they do not want conflict in any form or shape. We call them the submissive ones. They are submissive. They don't do much. They don't like conflict. They don't like trouble. They don't like any kind of shouting. So whatever you want and is good with you, go ahead and do it. Whatever you do, they don't say nothing about it because they don't want any kind of conflict. And then the last kind is the one we call the manipulators, the manipulative communicators. Let me read about them. They are the scheming type, they are the calculating, and they are shrewd. About these manipulating people, they manipulate, they will influence, they will control you until they get their way or to their own advantage. Those are the manipulative communicators. They will manipulate, they will control. If they need to lie, they will lie. If they need to make up stories, they will make up stories. They will do anything to make sure that they get their way. They will manipulate, they will intimidate until they get their way. So those are the five kinds of communication style. Remember, we said we have the assertive, we have the aggressive communicator, we have the passive aggressive communicator, then we have the submissive communicator, and finally we have the manipulative communicator. These are the five kinds of communicators we have. So I want you to take a seat back, do some mental calculation, ask yourself, which one am I? And you don't have to be just one. I have seen people that are passive aggressive and they are also assertive at the same time. I have seen people that are passive aggressive and they are also submissive. Why we have seen people that are assertive and aggressive at the same time. Why I have seen people that have the five styles all by themselves. <laughs> they have the five styles. They are assertive. They are aggressive. They are passive aggressive. They are submissive in some areas and they are very manipulative in some areas too. So find out which one you want you are. Find out which one your spouse or your partner is and find a way to figure it out where it can be conducive for two of you. Now that we know what communication is. Now that we know we have two kinds of communication. We have the verbal and the non-verbal. We have talked about communication skills. Five of them, the assertive, the aggressive, passive aggressive, submissive, and finally the manipulative communicators. Now that we have said the five styles, now let us move on to something else. You ask yourself, how do you receive love? Because you have to know how your partner communicates love to you for you to be able to receive it. So many of us receive love in different languages. We have five kinds of languages for people to express and take love. The first one is what I call words of affirmation. These are those people that like you to tell them, you are so gorgeous, you are so beautiful. Sweetie, oh my God, you are beautiful. You are looking so sexy today. Oh my God, you are so wonderful. They like words of affirmation. They like you to keep reaffirming to them how beautiful, how wonderful, and that is how they receive love. So if your partner, this is her way of receiving love, and you're giving her another style of love, of love language or you're using another love language on her, it's not going to work because that's not who she is or that's not who he is. The second one is what we call the acts of service. Acts of service are those people that they receive love. Their love language is when you do stuff for them. 
Oh my God, my husband did cooked today. Oh my God, my husband helped me clean the house. Oh my God, you know my husband did laundry. My husband folded all the clothes. My husband took the children to the park. My husband did this, my husband did that. Oh my God, my wife packed me lunch today. My wife did this, my... That's how they see and that's how they receive love. They receive it by acts of service. When you do stuff for them, that's how you are communicating that you love them. And then the third one are those that receive gifts. They love to receive gifts. It doesn't have to be expensive. It can be a banana from the store. It can be chicken nuggets from McDonald's. It can be a frosty from Wendy's. Just any little thing, they just, that's how they take love. That's how they give and that's how they receive love. That's how you communicate to them that you love them. When you buy stuff for them, no matter how small, it doesn't have to be expensive. It must not be a car all the time. It can be the smallest, it can be the smallest flower. It can be a packet of Skittles from, from Kroger. It might be a chocolate bar. Just they love to receive gifts. That is their own love language. And then we have the fourth one, which is quality time. Those that love you to spend time with them. They don't really want your flowers. They don't want you to give them gifts. They don't want you to spend quality, to uh, give them acts of service. They don't want you to give them words of affirmation. All they want from you is quality time. Spend time with me. Let's go to the movies. Let's watch TV. Let's go to the park. Let's take a stroll. Let's walk. That's for them. When you sit down, spend time with them, watch a movie with them, you are communicating to them that you love them. And that is how they receive. That's their love language. And finally, the last... <coughs> excuse me. And finally, the last one. Remember, before I get to the last one, we have talked about four already. We have talked about words of affirmation. We have talked of... Um, we have talked of words of affirmation. We have talked of... Uh, what are acts of service we have talked about receiving gifts we have talked about quality time and the last one is physical touch some people they like they are touchy touchy they like to rub your back they like to hold hands they like to give you a peck they like to rub your shoulders they like to rub your uh, your, your shoulders they like to rub your elbow they like to they just touch you pass they touch you they tap you here they tap you there they tap that's how they express love. So if somebody loves physical touch, that is how you communicate love to them. And then you, your own communication is words of affirmation. You see, you are giving the love language that he or she is not receiving. By then there is going to be problem in the marriage because your wife is saying, you never tell me you love me. You never tell me you love me because maybe she is a word of affirmation person. She wants you to keep telling her that you love her. And what maybe the husband is the one that believes in just giving gifts. So he's buying gifts, he's giving gifts, and the wife is receiving it the wrong way. I keep telling you, you're not, te tell me you love me. Tell me I'm looking good today. How do I look, honey? Do I look pretty? Do I look sexy? Do I look, and the husband is like, no, yeah, 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 you look sexy. Oh, but I bought you something. You see, that is, you are not communicating. That's not communication because you're giving her love through one way while she's receiving love through another way. So there is no communication. Remember what I said in the beginning. Communication is the give and take of information between two people. So if I'm going to give and I'm going to take, I must be giving what I have and I must be taking what I need. I'm giving you what I, I want. I'm giving you what I have and I'm receiving from you and taking from you what I need in my life. So husbands, so wives, so partners, lovers, please, my sister, my brother, that's why I brought this to you guys. We have talked about communication. I'm going to stop very soon because I wanted to bring this to the body of Christ. Let us learn to start talking to each other. It doesn't matter what you say. Is how you say it, is when you say it, your facial expression, your body language, your hand gestures, your tone of voice, how you are communicating. And what kind of love language are you using? Are you communicating to your lover, to your wife, to your spouse? What kind of style, communication style are you using? Are you assertive? Are you aggressive? 
Are you partial? Are you passive aggressive? Are you submissive? These are the things we should know. Let us go down on the comment and tell me which one you are. Are you in these five styles, communication styles I've talked about? Assertive, aggressive, pass, passive aggressive, submissive, and finally manipulative. I want you to go down below in the comment section. Tell me which one you are and also tell me how do you receive love? What is your love language? Remember we said five of them. We have said five this night. We said words of affirmation. We said the second one is acts of service. The third one is receiving of gifts. The fourth one is spending quality time. And the fifth one is physical touch. Go down to the comment section. Tell me what your love language is and tell me what kind of communication style you have. Let's go down there. Let's get it popping in the, com in the comments below. And remember, remember, you are beautifully and wonderfully made by God. Remember to give us a thumbs up. Remember to share this video. Remember to write us to our email, uniqueacudo at gmail.com. And please, please remember to subscribe. You are beautifully and wonderfully made by God. That is why you are unique. Take care of yourself and each other. And please, let's get the communication skills into... Let's get the communication skills working in our marriages. Let us start talking. Guys, we need this because communication is the key. And it is the motor that holds our relationship together. Bye.